Hi, I'm Billy of the Fuji Guys, here to show you the top features on the S8000 uh, series of cameras, the 8200, 8300, and even the 8400 and the Wi-Fi version of the 8400. They're basically the same cameras, uh, with the exception for the Wi-Fi feature on the 8400W. Uh, all the features are the same. Let's take a look at some of the cool features that this camera does offer. Let's take a look at the manual mode on this camera. Um, the camera obviously offers things like this SR Auto that automatically detects the scene and adjusts both the exposure for that particular scene as well as uh, possibly the focusing. If it determines the subject using face detection, it's going to shoot it in the portrait mode. But you also have manual mode. So aside from you know the program Auto, which is basically automatic, but it opens up some extra controls like sharpness uh, and whatnot and white balance settings, you can shoot in your shutter or aperture priority mode mode and in either of those modes you basically use the command down on the back here to rotate and adjust the aperture and for instance for shutter speeds again you can use this command down on the back to rotate and adjust the shutter speed. This is showing one four hundredth of a second and as I go back the opposite direction whoops It's showing one eighth of a second. Okay. You can also have four manual controls where you control both the shutter speeds and aperture uh, on this camera. As you can see here, it also gives you this little uh, metering system that tells you if your image is underexposed or overexposed based on your shutter speed aperture combination. So, for instance, if I want to adjust the uh, aperture on this camera, I would push the exposure button on the top and it toggles to the aperture controls. I can use this to adjust the aperture, okay, and if I push it again, it toggles back to the shutter speeds and I can actually adjust the shutter speeds. And as I adjust both of the manual controls, you see this line moves left and right. If I adjust the shutter speed so it's too fast, my image is going to be underexposed. If I take that photo, it should end up being a, a, a basically a dark image, as you can see right there. If I adjust the shutter speed to be slow, in this instance, it's one eighth of a second. If I take that shot, it should give me a washed out image. So if I play that back, you'll see it's kind of washed out there. And so in order to properly expose it, I can use this little guide, set up my shutter speed so that it's kind of moving the, uh, the point to the middle. When I take that same scene, it should give me now um, a proper exposure. So that's basically the uh, con manual controls on the camera. Now the camera offers uh, HD video recording. Um, with this series of cameras, it has a stereo microphone, which is nice. You also have a dedicated video recording button. You can push it to start and stop the videos. Uh, you can also take photos during the video. So if I push the shutter button, I can take a snapshot and it will be uninterrupted. I can actually stop the video and when I play it back, I will have both my images that I've captured as well as my full HD video, which I can play back. It is stereo sound with the mic. There is a built-in stereo, uh, sorry, there is a, uh, a speaker in the bottom so you can actually hear the auto as you play it back. So that's just uh, the video functionalities. You can go into the menu and scrolling down, you can see the, um, you know, the movie control modes here. You can actually change it from full HD at, you know, 60 frames a second to uh, 720p, you know, right down to uh, even a high speed mode. Let me show you this high speed mode. It's kind of cool at 480 frames a second. It allows me to record a video and kind of slow down the scene. So I'm going to drop this pencil. So I'm going to try to push the record button here. Drop the pencil and then stop. And that short distance of recording, as you can see, it's going to play back quite long. And you're going to see in slow motion the pencil kind of drop down. So that's kind of cool, but of course there's no audio in this in this mode. So that's just a quick look at the uh, video functionalities of this camera. There's a cool feature on this camera that allows you to uh, do some uh, you know fancy effects or advanced filter effects. You change it to the advanced dial on the camera, and then by doing that you can push the menu OK button and select between the different advanced features, including what we're going to show, which is the advanced filter. So I'm going to select that. And from there, I have different functions like the toy camera effect that gives me sort of a vignetting effect of an old school camera. You have this miniature effect that blurs the top and bottom. Works really best to kind of create a diorama effect when you're shooting down 
uh, you know, from, from top down. Um, and then you have things like pop color, soft focus, which gives you sort of that, uh, that, that dreamy effect where the subject's face is, uh, you know, kind of out of, out of, slightly out of focus. There's even a cross screen effect, which I find kind of cool. And uh, basically when you take the photo, um, anything that has bright highlight areas, it's going to give you sort of that cross screen sort of bling effect there, as you can see, it's what I call it. So if I zoom in here and anything that's kind of uh, washed out, it gives me sort of that starlight uh, uh, cross filter effect. Uh, in addition, of course, uh, one of the other features I like on the advanced, fe uh, feature, advanced filter, of course, is the isolation of colors. So as you can see here, I can isolate blue, yellow, red, uh, orange, green, um, purple. I'm just going to use yellow because I have a yellow camera here. As you can see here, what happens is that it isolates anything that's yellow and keeps the color and anything else becomes sort of monochromatic. So if I take that photo, um, you can see that it's going to uh, give me a cool effect. I do get it to see a live preview before I take the photo, which I kind of I, I, I like. As you can see there, uh, the back wall is kind of slightly orange, so it kind of showed, but also the, uh, uh, the camera here is orange and it's really appearing and everything else is black and white. This works best maybe in a pumpkin field where you, the kids are sitting down and you want to isolate all the orange colors from the pumpkin and everything else becomes monochromatic, which is a, a kind of a cool effect on this camera. Now depending on the camera model uh, in this 8000 series, the zoom may, may vary a little bit. Uh, this one I'm using is a uh, 44 times zoom, but they can vary slightly. Uh, to zoom on the camera, you have the zoom control on the top, which uh, allows you to zoom into that, uh, you know, 44 times on this particular model. Or you can use the side lever to zoom in, zoom out as well. And then, of course, uh, you do have the option to configure the side level uh, zoom for different speeds. So if I scroll down and look at, I guess, in the setup menu, sorry, and I scroll down, I should be able to see the uh, zoom side control, side zoom lever, and I can change the speed from high to middle to low to even an auto back, which means when I zoom out and I push the back or the wide button, it remembers my last zoom position and jumps back to it. I'm going to set it to low and I'll show you what the difference between that is. As you can see for low, it's a lot slower. And then with the, uh, the, the top zoom, it still retains the fast speed, as you can see here. And this might be used for doing videos. When, when you want to record videos and uh, you want it to slowly zoom in, zoom out, uh, that's where you would uh, actually uh, uh, use that functionality for the side zoom. Now, a great thing about this series of cameras is that, in, in addition to the LCD screen, there's also an electronic viewfinder, which is a sort of an imitation of an LCD screen, but for your eyes. And basically, what you do is you push the EVF button to toggle between the two screens. And when you look up, you basically see exactly what you would see on the LCD screen. Even on playback mode, you would also be able to see, um, by pushing the EVF button, sorry, it can be toggled to be used on the top instead. So it's very useful for bright sunny days where uh, you, know, you want to uh, you know, have a better experience for shooting. And uh, you know, it also reduces the amount of battery usage because it's a smaller LCD screen versus the larger, much brighter LCD. On top of that, you also have a diopter adjustment that you can adjust so that it's very comfortable if you're an eyeglass wearer. And it's a great feature to really, uh, to really use, especially for a bright sunny day. If you're out and about and you're traveling, uh, there's a feature called the motion panoramic mode. It allows you to create uh, a cool panoramic image up to 360 degrees. You've got to set the dial to panoramic mode. From there, you can change the angle. Uh, you don't have to do a full 360. You can do 180 or 120. Uh, in addition to that, you can also change the direction so you don't have to pan left to right. You can do it right to left, up, down. And one of the tricks that I like to show people is that if you change the directions to up and down or down and up, you rotate the camera like this instead, and then you do your panoramic. It's actually going to give you a higher resolution. Whoops. Let me try that uh, demo again. Okay, so if I play that back for you, it's going to auto-rotate properly. Um, but it's going to give me a higher resolution panoramic, and I, I can push down and I can actually have it kind of pan through the uh, scene for me, or I can also zoom in uh, to the image itself and, and pan left and right to see what it looks like. So it's a great little feature to, to have with this camera.
Now, if you're shooting at nighttime, um, you know, you, you have the controls for ISO, um, which helps with the brightness, but sometimes it adds noise. There's a cool feature on this called the Pro Focus Mode, and it's access through the advanced dial. You push the manual OK button while you're in the advanced dial, and from there you can actually select from the different advanced features, including this Pro Low Light Mode. So in this Pro Low Light Mode, what it does is that it uses uh, basically four shots out of a single image, and it merges it together to isolate what noise is and what isn't noise, and it gives you a cleaner image. Of course, because it takes four images, you want to keep this camera steady as possible, whether it's on a tripod, a ledge, um, or even holding it very, very steady so that you don't add motion to it, and it's going to give you a much cleaner image than if you were to shoot with a single shot at a higher ISO. Uh, in addition to that, in that same functionality uh, mode, the advanced dial mode, there's also the feature called High Dynamic Range, which is HDR, and it prevents you know, the highlights from being washed out and the shadow uh, from being too black. And uh, in this same mode, when you take a picture, it's going to capture, again, four different shots, and it's going to try to even out the highlights and the shadow so that uh, you get even distribution of uh, details in the scene. So when you look at it, the highlights are not washed out, but the shadows also contain you know, some details, as you can see. Uh, in the areas here, it's not just a complete black image, which is a cool feature to have. And of course, within that same advanced mode, uh, there's things like sort of the uh, 3D shooting where you can actually take, you know, a 3D photo and create a 3D file by pushing and taking a picture one time. It gives you an overlay. You want to give you that slight separation. Take the second shot, and uh, it's going to create an MPO file. Uh, that you can actually play back on a 3D uh, TV if you have one and or on this it's just going to flip it back and forth to give you a simulated 3D effect but of course uh, you know playing back on a proper 3D display you definitely see that and it's a cool feature on this camera. Aside from the zoom that's available on these cameras of course you also have the ability to do macro if you're in the SR Auto the camera's going to auto adjust to the macro mode so that you can get uh, proper focus, but once you get, I guess, too close to the uh, to the subject, uh, the camera might not be able to focus. If it does, it's great, as you can see there. You can also turn on macro manually if you're shooting in any other modes. And I like the macro mode because it gives you very sharp details. Uh, and as well, it, it, as you can see here, it's quite incredibly sharp where you can actually see the paint texture on the pencil. But also you get that nice shallow depth of field that you can isolate a subject. So it's not just for taking pictures of objects and flowers and bugs, but you can even do portraits in the macro by even zooming in. And that's going to help you uh, isolate the subject a little bit more, giving you sort of, sort of that shallow depth of field of look that you, that you may want. So you know, don't forget to use a macro, not just for close-up, but for you know, other shots as well. Now, being a, an outdoors camera with a long zoom, um, you do have a feature called the high-speed shooting mode, and it allows you to, to fire a bunch of uh, shots uh, uh, simultaneously uh, and very quickly. And to do that, you push this button here, and it brings up the menu where you can select the various high speed modes. And depending on the mode you shoot, the frame rate changes as well as possibly the resolution may change. Here on the continuous mode here, this is going to be, give me full resolution. And it fires off a bunch of shots here. And again, it's based on your shutter speed. So sometimes if it's not very bright, it's not going to shoot the full you know, 8 frames a second shooting if that's the case. Uh, this is useful for trying to, you know, uh, guess, taking the guesswork out of doing action shots. Uh, let me see if I can show you the higher speed shooting on that. Um, set it up to the high speed shooting mode, but I think the resolution is dropped down slightly smaller. And as you can see, it fires a bunch of shots, a lot quicker of course, but uh, at a smaller resolution. So again, a cool feature to use uh, when you're outdoors. So that's just a quick look at some of the cool features that this series of cameras offer. Again, if you want more information on the camera, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as follow me on Twitter. Until then, I'm Billy, one of the Fuji guys.